I'm Rosalind Picard. I direct research in affective computing at the MIT Media Lab, and that is computing that relates to, arises from, or deliberately influences emotion. Many years ago, I uh, encouraged to take risks, decided to write a book called Affective Computing at a time when emotions were really seen as something that made you irrational and as something that was pretty much undesirable. How has it evolved over the years, this field? Yeah, it's, it's really remarkable how quickly I think based on findings from a lot of areas, from neuroscience, from psychology, from uh, medicine and marketing uh, and, and education, that emotion has come to be seen as something that plays a constant role in our experience. It's not like you're usually unemotional and then suddenly there's an outburst of emotion, although that can be the most visible. But emotion's always there. It's like weather, you know, whether it's sunny, boring, um, rainy, thunderstorms, tornadoes, it's always there and it's... Uh, changing and it's biasing and affecting everything we do. What impact on the field of robotics does this understanding of emotion or machines and having yeah. emotion? Yeah, I, I think for, for robots it's going to be essential to understand human emotion. Uh, you know, think back to Clippy, that automated paper clip, right? And one of the things, one of the reasons Clippy got a stand, one of the reasons Bill Gates got a standing ovation when he said Clippy was going away <laughs> was because Clippy was so annoying, right? Now, Clippy actually had great AI. It had really brilliant machine learning ability to tell that you're writing a letter. Um, it was very good at knowing what you were doing, but it was completely impoverished at knowing how you were feeling about the interaction. So in fact, if you're having a really bad time, and Clippy kind of marches out smiling and happy, well, that's rude, right? Mm -hmm. For somebody to enter your space and completely ignore your distress and to start dancing and acting happy, right? <laughs> like, there's, it's like schadenfreude in German, like they're happy at your misfortune. Um, so that's a way to engender disliking. Um, so it's no surprise that people started to hate Clippy. Now imagine if Clippy were a full-size robot coming into your living room and acting like real f overly friendly and happy when you're in a bad mood or you're in pain or you're, you know, you're suffering some grief and Clippy doesn't read, you know, robot Clippy doesn't read your emotions right. Um, you know, it's going to look like the flesh fairs in the AI movie, right? When Kubrick has them melting, you know, the robots. People are going to hate these things. Right. So what people, I think, need to realize and increasingly a number of roboticists are realizing this uh, is that emotions, emotional intelligence is essential mm -hmm. for any technology that is interacting with a human in a way that purports to be intelligent. When it comes to robotics or machines and emotions, it's one thing to have artificial intelligence. It's another thing also even to be able to understand, uh, to have that empathy or to understand, to read the emotion that a human is giving off. But you also say that for them to be, for these machines to really be intelligent, that they're also going to have to feel emotion. Right. How, right. how do we yeah. have machines so, feel? Yeah, so the phrase for a machine to feel emotion is, is a, a bit of a complicated one. We might need to, to pull apart a little bit. I think the machine needs to be able to express uh, empathy. Mm -hmm. It needs to be able to like look sorry if, if it's done something wrong. It needs to maybe share your joy and, and share some of your sorrow in terms of outward appearance. Now, all of that can be done without the machine having feelings like you and I have. In fact, when it comes to one aspect of those feelings we have, that qualia, that experiential component, nobody knows how to build that in a machine yet. Um, in fact, we don't even, it's not even that we don't know how to build it, we don't even see how it's possible yet with current <laughs> hardware and software and biological computers and so forth, right? We, we just don't see it emerging from those complex uh, things that we know how to build. Um, that said, we can't prove that it's impossible, right? So what we're, the, the state of the art right now is machines can look like they have feelings. They have some internal mechanisms that bias their decision making and actions in a way that performs a function similar to what feelings perform in us. Uh, but machines currently lack that experiential component of feelings that we have. You think then that even once our robots sense our feelings and feel for themselves that they still will be machines. I, I don't know if robots will ever have feelings the way that we do. I don't, again, see how it could happen right now, but that doesn't prove it couldn't happen. I, I do think that um, you know, it'll, it'll be some time before the robots, on their own accord, 
go out and seek their rights as robots <laughs> because they feel unjustly treated. Right. And if they do that, if we get to that point, it would be because we basically built them for that purpose. Mm -hmm. so, so do you see, we, we have the choice as the creators of these machines to design them in such a way that they go seeking and acting about seeking such rights or that we keep them around more as, um, one might say, subservient or as companions or as partners you know, mm -hmm. in other things that we want to accomplish. Why do you think there is resistance to the idea of emotion and machinery, emotion and robotics? Great question. Um, why is there resistance to emotion and machines? I think it, it just seems, on, on one level, it just seems like these two don't go together, mm -hmm. right? And it's not like a nice combination like oil and vinegar. It's, it's more like you wouldn't, you know, puree your vegetables and your dessert together in the blender, you know, and suck it through a straw, right? It, it's kind of like, you know, machines we want to be logical, rational, predictable, and emotion has seemed like the antithesis of that. Um, and yet, as we see, people already attribute emotion to machine, right? Mm -hmm. Like when it crashes on you, people are, I, I've had people say to me, this machine hates me, <laughs> right? Well, of course it doesn't hate them, but people are already attributing human-like characteristics even to desktop, you know, very machine-like uh, boxes, right? So I, th I think the question is not are people uncomfortable with it, but in what ways can we make people, can we use emotion that makes the experience better and more comfortable? And usually that's done with a way that emotion actually makes it smarter, more respectful, um, more acknowledging of your interest and your likes and dislikes without it uh, actually being like emotional in your face. It's interesting that AI for its first 50 years with very few exceptions uh, didn't think emotion was important. You know, they've got math, they've got language, they've got uh, logic and all kinds of other decision-making, reasoning, and perceptual processes. But they didn't pay attention to emotion. And as I started digging into, and, and I was of that camp for quite a while. In fact, I was trying to build machines that were better at perceiving information, at seeing and hearing. And as I learned more about how our brains work and perceive information, I stumbled into these findings that deep down um, beneath our highly evolved cortex is these subcortical structures that are deeply involved in emotion, attention, and memory. And with my AI hat on, I thought, well, I'm not interested in emotion, but attention and memory are important. So I started to learn more about those deeper brain structures. And I kept bumping into the fact that, oh dear, emotion is actually key. It seems to be affecting everything that goes in our memory. Everything that we shift our attention to is guided in part by this emotion system. So if we want to actually build an AI that works in the real world, that handles complex, unpredictable information with flexibility and intelligence, we need the, you know, basically an emotion system to do it. You can imagine this didn't go over real well <laughs> in the beginning. Um, but now, actually, I think a lot of people are starting to see that this is a core part of building an intelligent system.